Also, I want to welcome uh, Debbie to the show, and we're going to we're going to get into uh, Debbie in, in just a little bit. But I have to say, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Aww. Like it is. <laughs> Here's what you guys don't know. Debbie flew all the way out here from San Diego, California to be on Living Oak Uncaged and to, be, to spend a few days active in our community. And so we are so, so grateful for that. So thank you so much. So glad you're here. Also, I have to give a shout out to Scotty, of course, Knuckles. Becoming a veteran on the show. I know, right? <laughs> Scotty is back. Three times now? Three or four. I am like the Alec Baldwin of Living on Cage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. You just show up, show up make those appearances. Maybe a little bit funnier. I don't know. Yeah, the jury's still out on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you're back. Like, I've missed you. and I it's always you. Oh, thanks, Scotty. It's yeah, always nice to create, a to create a show with you, so thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, of course, you guys know my faithful sidekick, Brandon, my husband. Um, thank you for all your support and for... Uh, you know, being here and making this show magical as well. Definitely. She surprised me today because I wasn't planning on being on the show. And as of an hour ago, I'm on the show, so. Yeah, what was really cool is that Debbie and Brandon were in the car and they were talking. And I was like, dude, Brandon just needs to be on the show. Like, what you bring to the table is, um, is really, Im is, it's just important. And it's an aspect that I'm not bringing, Scotty's not bringing, Debbie's not bringing, so. Yeah, thank you for jumping in just real quick. Pressure's on now, huh? Pressure's on! <laughs> Make it happen. It's a good thing you had the Botox done. Yeah, doesn't so, he yeah. look fresh yeah. and so ready to go? <laughs> so ready to go. So before we jump into, into the conversation tonight... Um, well, the title is Freedom from Addiction, and really it's not just addiction in the like sense of it has to be just addiction that we see like opiates and stuff, but that is a big part of it. So I don't want you to think that if that's not something you're struggling with that it's not relevant to this conversation because really we're talking about just being authentically you, mm. right? And, and how that relates to freedom from addiction. So uh, if you have any questions or if you have anything to add, please, by all means, put them in the comments. We're gonna try to keep an eye on that. And if, if we can grab a comment or a question out and, and insert it into the, into the talk, then we will, so. And if we, if we don't catch it in real time, we, we can answer the question later. Yes, so definitely. For sure. Definitely. Yeah. We definitely. We would love that interaction and stuff. So please, by all means, throw some questions in there or comments. Very good. Beautiful. So I want to, I have spent the past day or kind of just half of today in the, I guess the past few weeks getting to know you mm -hmm. and you are, she's an incredible lady and you guys will experience that in a minute. But all the way from California, just really uh, just tell us what inspired you to be here. Mm. Well, I mean, it, it, it all started with this conversation of a mutual friend of ours, right? Holly Mootlu, what's up, girl? Holly, girl. Shout out. Um, yeah. Who friended me on Facebook. And, you know, it's just it's interesting. I mean, you know, we probably get friended all the time. And, and for some reason, she friended me. And I just, something inspired me to ask her, hey, what inspired you to friend me? And she responded, and anyway, we decided to just set up a, a call just to get to know each other. You know, how often do you do that? Yeah. We probably have however many Facebook friends we all have, and it's like, when do you ever say, hey, I just want to actually get to know really you. Really connect. Yeah. And so we just set up this call, and, you know, we were sharing, and she's like, I'm out in Dayton, and Sharon, I've been hearing all about the amazing stuff that she's doing, and she's like, what are you up to? And I was sharing with her, you know, that I help people get free from addictions and obsessions and self-sabotaging patterns and all this stuff, and she's like, hearing more about my story and she's like, oh my gosh, I have a community that you need to meet. Yes. I got some people that you got need to connect with. You got to talk to my girl Toya. You got to meet these people. <laughs> and, and it just, you know, and after that, I'm like, I trust you. I trust because like, I, I am so deeply, like my dharma in life, I didn't choose this, it chose me, but like my dharma is to create a global constellation of people who are living free from addiction and lit up and lighting up others. And I visualize this every day. We even did like a little mini version of yeah. kind of like, I do that every day. Like I connect with that every single day. Mm. And so when I have, you know, little like synchronicities happening like that, I'm like, oh, these are probably some of the nodes in that constellation. And I just need to be there. Yeah. Like it really was nothing. Like she said, this is, 
I might be paraphrasing, but you said, um, listen, I'm going to say yes. I'm just, I'm saying yes. This is a year for me to say yes. And so I was like, okay, let's make this happen. And here you are. And it's, it's been so great. I feel like I've just known you forever and it's just been such a beautiful connection. Um, so I know like what you were just saying is like you go around and you're really passionate about people living free from addiction. Mm -hmm. And the show, the title of the, of the show is How to Be Authentically All of You. Mm -hmm. What does that look like or when, mm. what does that mean? Like freedom of addiction and how to be authentically you. How do, the, do, the, how do those two things go hand in hand? I love that. I love that because, you know, that was the thing for me. Like, I didn't know, I mean, when I was in my own addictions, like, first of all, what drove me to use drugs and food and overworking and, you know, addicted to getting attention and, you know, unhealthy relationships and, like, all the stuff that I was doing, coffee and sleeping pills and, like, every single thing that I was doing was, I, I didn't know how to be me. Yeah. I was so uncomfortable with me. Mm -hmm. I was pretty certain of a few things. Like I knew, I knew that I wasn't enough mm -hmm. of the things that I needed to be, you know, I, or I was too much of the wrong things. You know, like I just felt like I just didn't fit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes me emotional because like I just, I just, I just didn't know how to be me. And yeah. so like, you know, people think that the addiction is the thing that you do, but I'm like, no, that's the solution. Or trying to be. That's the so that's trying to be the solution mm. for an underlying feeling of like, I don't know how to be me. I am so uncomfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. And that's why I feel like we struggle not with a disease, but a dis-ease, like a separation from ease and comfort. Yeah. You know, and whether you're using controlling, fixing, and obsessing, or whether you're using heroin, or whether you're using alcohol, or whether you're using attention, or whether you're using food, or it like, doesn't matter. Whatever we're doing is the thing that we're using to try to fill that part of us and try to like just be comfortable being ourselves. Absolutely. And that hits, that hits home for me at this time of just where I am in life right now. now I'm going to get emotional. Not a shot to you guys that watch the show. Um, but like I've been in this space, and you guys let me know if you've been there. And I was talking to you a little bit about it today. Like it's probably the first time ever in my life that I'm really being mindful of being surrendered. Mm. Just choosing to surrender to God and to the journey and to the process. And inside of that, I have to relinquish control. Mm -hmm. And for one, it hit me as I was in the kitchen today cooking like, that's what this uncomfortable feeling is, is letting go, is not being in control. And what has always been my sense of comfort was to make sure that I knew the outcome and I had things go the way that I said they, that they were going to go. And so now that, I'm kind, now that I'm choosing not to do that, I have to sit with why did I feel the need to do that? Why do I feel the need to create chaos and busyness and distraction in my life? And I'm coming to realize that to sit with who I am is uncomfortable and it's painful and it requires a lot of work. Totally. I thank you for sharing that. I, like, this is the thing that I see, and this was me so much, is that I was constantly trying to gain control everywhere. And, and like, because, because I thought that the opposite of control was being out of control. And I felt so out of control. I felt so out of control with food. I felt so out of control with like using. I just felt so out of control in so, so many areas. And so like everything I was doing was trying to get a sense of control, get my shit together, get disciplined, like figure it out. Like my mind was constantly going obsessed, anxious, like yes. trying to figure it out, yes. right? Trying to put the pieces together. Like when I can just figure these things out, when you would all just stop needing something from me, when everything could just slow down, mm -hmm. screw it, I just gotta leave it, I, just gotta, I gotta numb out right now. It's like everything was this control because I thought the opposite of control was being out of control. But the opposite of control is not being out of control. Mm. The opposite of control is trust. Mm. Mm. Like trusting yourself? Be, well, cultivating, so what I call, I call it an inner guidance system. It's really a three-part thing. Because that's the other thing. It's like when you have made so many commitments to yourself that you haven't been able to keep, 
You don't trust yourself. You don't trust yourself to make healthy choices. It's true. Or you say, like, I'm going to trust myself. I really feel this in my gut. And then it doesn't turn out the way you think that it was going to. And then you're like, I can't trust myself. You know, like, we have all these games we play with ourselves. We don't trust ourselves. What I realized on my journey was that cultivating a sense of deep inner trust, there were three components to it. Three. That's six. Three. <laughs> you're um, you're double. You're hand. bolding it. Like, Counting mm, is mm, fun. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know the the first part was like that gut instinct. It's like like can I trust my gut? See, so many of us we get a gut hit on something, but then our head overrules it. Our head's like, no, you're gonna look stupid. No, they're gonna think this. No, they're gonna judge you. No, you don't know what you're talking about. No, maybe you should just do it the way that other person thinks. And we second guess ourselves. Yep. And it's the first way we just we just totally take ourselves out that way. Mm. The second one is with our sixth sense intuition. So we have our instinct here. We have our intuition here, and we are so like hijacked by our own negative thinking and by our over analysis and by all of just the delusions that we've got and all the things that we think about how we're supposed to be and who we are and what it's like and what's possible and you know all of our judgments and stuff and so we don't give ourselves the opportunity to really tap into that inner wisdom mm -hmm. you know and then we have divine inspiration. Now, a lot of us might, you know, have spiritual beliefs. You might go to church. You might have, you know, be able to talk about spiritual concepts. But what I realized is that most of us are blocked from access. So imagine if you have, let's just say the universe, God, spirit, source, whatever your word is, fill in the blank. That, that is trying to gift you and guide you all the time, right? So just imagine you got like, love and light pouring through you and trying to give you all this stuff but if you are like can't trust myself got you know resentment and fear weighing heavy on my heart you know my mind is caught up with all these other things about what I think I should be and who I think I should be and that I'm not enough and whatever then it's like we're playing energetic pinball mm. with the universe mm -hmm. and we can't actually metabolize that stuff that's coming through and so this is what I find. What we got to do is get free from the stuff that's blocking us so that we can access the power that's working on our behalf anyway. And when you get in touch with that stuff, you're able to, I, I now have this like three-part inner trust system. I can feel something in my gut. And today, I am, I'm able to like have my gut, my heart, and my mind all on the same team together instead of kind of on like, you know, opposite, opposite teams. And so there's like, so, so it means that I can like, I can connect into my inner guidance. I can have inspired intuition and I can have that deep knowing, which is like that knowing that you, you know without knowing how you know. Mm. And, and then I can, in those silent moments, I was just sitting here with Scotty and we had like a moment of silence and he's like, I love the silence. And I was just thinking to myself, the silence is when I can actually hear. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And how often, like you were saying, Toya, like we're so distracted, we're so busy, oh, yeah. we're so, we don't give ourselves that because we're so afraid of what happens in the silence. To sit, to sit to with sit. ourselves. Mm -hmm. To sit with ourselves. Yeah. It's so uncomfortable, By right? 10 seconds of my silence, I'm like, I gotta get my phone. And <laughs> totally. We gotta fill it, we gotta plug yeah. it in because we don't know how to be with ourselves. And this is the piece that I'm like, we will continue to do what we do until we don't have to do it anymore. Mm. When someone comes to me and they're like, I can't stop doing this, I'm like, of course you can't stop doing it. You're gonna do what you do until you don't have to do it anymore. Mm. But the question is, are you willing to try something different? Mm. And I'm not, I don't care about what you're doing right now, but are you willing to, are you willing to set aside what you think you know to have a new experience? That too right there in, it can seem really frightening. Like a lot of what we know is comfortable. It's our comfort zone. So to remove that is like taking on Scotty's over there smiling like, yeah, I get that. <laughs> to, to open yourself up to something new is, is vulnerable. It's putting yourself out there. It really is saying, I don't know it all. And I'm willing to say that I don't know it all. What I'm doing is not working. And it can be risky. You know, and at the same time, very powerful. And go ahead. I was going to say, but even if you know that it's not working, <laughs> it can still, because of that comfort. Like, I knew for years that me, you know, reacting in anger. 
it was never not solved working. anything. It wasn't working. <laughs> it never fixed. It was not working. And I knew that, <laughs> yeah. but yet it was comfortable. I knew that mm. if I responded a certain way, condescendingly or whatever, to my wife, that she would react a certain way. And I didn't like the way that she reacted, but I could predict it, so it became comfortable. Mm -hmm. mm. And I would even invite almost, I think we overuse the word comfortable. I say familiar. Familiar. Because in my experience, yeah. there is nothing comfortable about that comfort zone. Yeah, that's a better word. I agree. It's so uncomfortable it's just being familiar. there. You know it's super what's familiar. Happen. Yeah. It's super familiar. Better the devil you know, right? Right. right. And, and and so then that's always my question of well, are you ready for more freedom? Mm. And I don't take that question lightly, and I don't like I'm not trying to be cute by asking that question because some of us are really not done with our story. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. some of us are like still got to sit and stew and brew and, and, and it's, <laughs> I'm about to write, sit and stew and brew and it's about you, you mm. know? <laughs> and <laughs> I felt like I should be beatboxing because that was pretty, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty awesome. <laughs> stew and brew, it's all, it's all about you. You know, and, and, and if that's where you are today, I don't want to take that away from, here it is, I don't want to take that away from you, you know? <laughs> Um, because because sometimes sometimes we need to be there. Sometimes if we're actually so cut off that we haven't felt anything, that actually one step up from complete indifference or apathy is actually getting angry. Like I don't, mm. I'm not here to I'm not here to dictate what your journey is. So maybe you got to be there. Maybe maybe your version of stewing and brewing is going to bring you to that internal emotional bottom where you're finally mm -hmm. willing to do something different. Mm -hmm. And who am I to like save the day and come in there and try to like Pollyanna, you know, the situation? Like, oh no, here, here's some personal development stuff for you to 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 do because I have an agenda to you know your path. And that to save you. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. almost. Go ahead, Fix Scotty. You. No, I was just gonna say, like, you know, in order for growth to take place, then we have to become unfamiliar. That's it. There has to be an element of vulnerability that has to come into play. And it's how vulnerable are you willing to become in order to grow? You know, even, the, you know, whatever that step is you take that feels unfamiliar, you know, it may not be the best result at first, but there is going to be, you know, learning that comes from that, mm. you know, and just allowing yourself to, to be open-minded enough to be vulnerable is going to allow that growth to take place. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not going to happen overnight. Time takes time, right? Slowly. You know, um... I don't know. It's it's beautiful. I, w I would rather be, you know, since this is the term we're using, I'd rather be unfamiliar today than familiar, mm -hmm. you know, because I know I'm going to learn something. And even in my recovery, in my journey, I still don't get it right. But here's the thing with not getting it right, I'm learning. I'm learning why I didn't get it right. And a lot of that's my spiritual condition and whatever energy that I'm putting into it. Mm. So being able to take a step back and reflect. Mm. also allows growth. Absolutely. So. Do you find like in your reflection when you sit in the quiet and you really go in and you look deep, is that a scary, scary journey? I don't know for, just to get it across, is that something that you try to avoid or is it now something that you, kind of like the dark cave that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like it can be a dark cave and right. when you enter into a dark cave there's some things that are unknown. So you really have to trust yourself as you're entering into this cave so that you can be in the darkness or it can be scary. Absolutely. So are you, is that kind of where you are like going into the caves, like you're ready to go in there? I'm ready, yes, because I'm ready to, to sell out for my recovery like I did when I was in active addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, I was willing to go to any length to, to get those drugs or that next mm -hmm. drink or whatever it took. Well, now I've flipped it and I'm willing to do whatever it takes mm -hmm. to stay grounded. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes there's still an element of self-will that comes into play. Like, you know, I'm going to give my higher power all of this, but I, I still want to hold on to this mm -hmm. bit. And it's that little bit that I hold on to that usually ends up backfiring uh. because I don't give it all away. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then again, there comes a learning experience. Right. You know, I know today that I have to give it all up mm. That's in really order good. to receive. So. <clears throat> There's something that you put on your page, Debbie, that really got me. And I got out my journal, and I was like, oh, my gosh. 
and you said before, and it really it was profound to me because here I am stepping into this community. And so I stepped into the community like I'm going to be a support love and I'm going to be encouragement. Mm -hmm. And then you posted something that said, where do you need to get honest with yourself? Mm -hmm. Where are you dealing with addiction? And it doesn't have to be these full-blown things like drugs and alcohol. And it was a moment where I went in and I was like, oh my word, my word, I can see where I'm dealing with, with maybe not full-blown addiction, I don't know how you want to say it, but there are definitely patterns of self-sabotage and things that I do. Yeah, because I mean, you crocheted that sweater in like four hours. <laughs> yeah, I did, because yeah. I was like... So I was, you know, I'm glad you recognized that. Anxious it's amazing though, I love thank it. Thank you. <laughs> nice job. So what do you recommend for that person, you know? What do you recommend mm. they do to experience that next level of authenticity and that next level of freedom? Mm. Yeah, well, gosh, I, I feel like it, it starts, you know, when you even just kind of like teed it up a moment ago where you were talking about your own sort of reference point for addiction and like, gosh, maybe I have that and what does that mean, you mm -hmm. know? And I think I think it's important to, to understand. I, I, I know that there's, there's so many beliefs and definitions about what addiction is and um, I'd love to share what it means for me and what I see like just what I see, you know, I see, I see addiction not as a disease, I see it as a dis-ease. I see, I see, it's like whatever we do, kind of like what I was talking about at the beginning, whatever we do to, to distract ourselves from or to numb ourselves from that underlying discomfort or dis-ease, you know, and that can be a myriad of things. And and one of the characteristics that I found of addiction is that it's when you want to stop, but you can't. Mm. And so, mm. you know, if we, if we just kind of go back, I mean, if anybody in real time just wants to think about, gosh, what's that thing, you know, that like I actually don't want to be doing anymore, but then I find that I can't stop doing. Yeah. And like we had talked about it earlier, and I, I think that like oftentimes we see this, you know, like, opiates we see this as this thing that you know you got we got to stop doing that but it's not there's something else that's causing us to want to do whatever it is that we're addicted to and whatever we're trying to cope you know well it's a form of detachment way. you yeah, know, right. you're using that to detach from to dealing with the actual core issue that's going on in your life totally so if we have this underlying sense of i don't i don't feel comfortable being me and i feel this dis-ease that's affecting me in my body, it's affecting me in my mind, it's affecting me in my spirit, then, you know, you take away my solution and now I just feel like my skin's been turned inside out and I'm walking around raw and yeah. I don't know how to be me even more and now I'm like feeling even more vulnerable and like everything's too loud and I feel way too sensitive. Yes. And it's like, so, so my approach is always, well, why don't we go ahead and why don't we address and treat the like that underlying discomfort and dis-ease. Why don't we start there, you know? And so to go back to your question of, well, what can somebody do if they're in this inquiry? I think that, you know, at the foundational level, it's, um, if we're gonna be addressing this, then we need to, first of all, somebody needs to get clarity on like what it actually means for them yes. to have addiction. Yeah. And not just work with somebody else's diagnosis, but to actually, um, like when I, when I work with someone, I'm like, hey, I'm actually not here to tell you what you are, what you're not. I'm gonna guide you through a process um, whereby you can uncover your own truth based off your own experience. Mm -hmm. Because I find that when somebody can truly understand based on their own experience, and then they can really understand, okay, because I fit this description, because this is the way that it is for me, I really get that the solution that might work for other people isn't going to work for me. Mm. You know, because that's the thing, too, is that some people, I just, you know, I just talked to somebody today, and they were like, well, I, you know, I was, I was doing opiates for about two years, but then I just you know, woke up one day and realized that's not what I want to do anymore, and I just changed my ways. And I'm like, that's amazing. And I can't relate to that, you know, because I, I, I feel like, the way that I was with all of my addictions was that 
I woke up one day and like didn't want to do it that way anymore. And then like the next weekend, I was doing it that way. Mm. Mm. And and I didn't, I I couldn't not do it. Mm. And it sounded like on Sunday I was like I will never do that again. And by Thursday I was like this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure like, nobody can relate to that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so you know like what what if, if you fit in that category. And I'm not talking just about drugs and alcohol right. or food. I'm, I'm talking about anything, mm -hmm. you know? If you fit into that category, then, then just a lifestyle change isn't, isn't going to work for you. Just using your mindset, thinking it through, like, you know, these things aren't going to work because I have a mind that will take me right back. Mm. It'll make up some justification or some kind of reason. And so I really, really got, so clarity is a big piece of really understanding, like, what your truth is and then what that means and what the solution then is for you. That's good. And and then there's some other pieces too. So that's like the clarity kind of is like what addresses like that like that 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 separation of ease of, of like in the mind. Mm -hmm. You know, but then when I look at okay, well what about our spirit? You know, what is what is that in our spirit? And you you actually already prefaced it earlier when you were, it, you it's like I got to get honest and I got to get humble. Mm. You know, and, and those are really, really great, big, huge, like, big league spirituality qualities to have that are so underrated is like, gosh, the ability to be honest with myself mm -hmm. is so huge. And then humility, you know, this is a piece that, uh, that like, I feel like is so misunderstood and misinterpreted where we, we interpret it as I've got to be really down on myself, um, I've got to like beat myself up, and I'm just never going to get this, and you know, I'm just like in this perpetual process of like trying to figure it out. But, but I see humility in this way of like, can I love myself enough to like you said, you know, like set aside what I think I know and open myself up and just say, hey, I don't have the answers. Mm. And I love myself enough right now where I'm actually, I, I'm okay with not knowing the answers. I'm not gonna make a meaning about that. I'm not gonna make that mean that I'm stupid or I'm weak or I don't get it or any of these things, but I'm actually gonna see that as a gift mm. that, can, that can launch me into greater freedom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there's this beautiful way at a really foundational level that we can like, really address the part of us that feels uncomfortable spiritually and by getting honest and by willing to be humble we open ourselves up to start to experience some of that that those that gifts that that guidance that 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 power that's flowing through us that wants to give us all of these amazing things we start to experience some of that and you know my thing is always well if whatever the addiction is, if or whatever you're going to, like that's your power source right now. So you're gonna keep on going to that until you can get access to a power source that overrides that power source. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, why mm -hmm. wouldn't you? Otherwise, right. You're, all you're doing is trying to fight against all something. All you're doing is trying to find it, but like, we, like if you're going to that for ease and comfort, then you're gonna keep doing that until you can access something that provides greater ease and comfort. Yeah. And yeah. so that's what that, that's what that spiritual part is. But then it's not just there, because I realize that we have bodies too, you know? And most of us are so up in our heads and so disconnected from ourselves, from our actual bodies. And I'm not just talking about, can you go work out? Can you lift? Can you run? Can you go to yoga? I'm talking right. about like being present in you, feeling safe in your own body, being like you can actually be quiet with yourself. Yeah. That is great big huge it is and i am i am learning that like i was telling you <laughs> yeah. like for whatever there's a reason why i'm in this season of of loneliness and it's yes. not bad a lot of times no. we make it a negative thing like oh my gosh i feel lonely um, and if we're not responsible with our thoughts it really can be a dangerous place so being responsible yeah. with your thoughts and really acknowledging where you are it has been such a great place for me to be and understanding myself and so when I'm sitting in my lonely, if depression comes in, if these, it's, it's an opportunity for me to stop and say, why? Mm -hmm. What is there for me? What, is, what do I need to acknowledge and deal with? Why does this keep coming up? Because really, 
sitting alone or being alone with yourself should be a beautiful thing. It should be something that we embrace and part of taking care of who we are. Mm -hmm. And we avoid it <laughs> at all cost. At least most of us avoid it at all cost. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Debbie, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for taking on this conversation. Tell people how they can get a hold of you oh, to gosh. continue this conversation yeah. and to, if they're interested in working with you and being with you. Yeah, gosh, I, um, I mean, this is just my, my passion to, to help people have more freedom, alignment, congruence, like just to be all of themselves, you know, be authentically all of themselves. So if that's so something good. that you want and, you know, you resonate, resonated with something that I shared, uh, book some time on my calendar and let's just actually chat, you know. You can go to allofme.today, so http forward slash forward slash allofme.today and just grab a spot on my calendar and and let's let's just connect you know because every single i'm not cookie cutter like every single person is unique and different and i want to hear where you at what you related to and you know how we can really look at your next steps for what what you know what mm. is next for you absolutely yeah. and here's a special treat so Debbie is in town tomorrow too, and she is willingly giving her time to our community. So if you're local to Dayton, FOA, what's the address? Finley? Do you know the yeah, address? Yeah, it's the Life Enrichment Center on the. Uh, Thank Finley you. Avenue. The Life Enrichment Center, FOA, Families of Addicts. You know what? If you're if you're not like we said, dealing with full full blown addiction, and you just want to hear more about what Debbie has to say and what she's up to and what she has to offer. Please come to FOA. It's going to be such a powerful time. The information should be on the screen. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And I, I tell you what, I've spent all day with her, and I am so excited to spend tomorrow and tomorrow night with her um, because what she has to offer truly is leading uh, to freedom and to taking you to that next level of authenticity with yourself. So don't miss it. She leaves on Thursday. She's here for a short time. <laughs> Come check her out. Um, oh, yeah, it's on the page. Yep, it's on the screen. It right Very there. good. <laughs> yeah. I want to give some special thanks to, um, to Merlin's production for audio. They have been huge in helping out mm -hmm. with our audio. So thank you so much for believing in what we do and for saying yes to letting us borrow your equipment. That is amazing, and we appreciate it. Um, big shout out to, of course, Steady Ready and Carson. Dude, you guys make it happen every week. Thank you so much, Carson and Davina, for being here and for, you know, having this be what it is because it wouldn't be without you guys. So, thank Yay. you. Can we get the number for this facility again? What do you think? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. I have it right here. Beautiful. Absolutely, we're going to do that. And I will let you close out the show with that. Also, we have Jordan Freshour who is in the house. Turn Thanks, to Jordan. Jordan. Let's Jordan. 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 Oh. <laughs> Dude, thank you for coming out. He's a fantastic phot photographer. Tell people where they can find you if they're interested, Jordan. Fresh Hour Photography on Facebook. All right. It's that easy. It's that easy. It's that easy. <laughs> and so, again, Brandon, thank you for being here. Thank you for being uh, of course. my sidekick, Your sidekick and for being so faithful <laughs> and diligent uh, every week, every day, and doing what it takes to make, th to make this happen outside of this, you know, with the kids and everything that we have going on. So. Well, I want to say thank, thank you, you for mm -hmm. this passion that you have that uh, inspired this and, you know, that we're here and that somebody from California wanted to come and be out here. So thank you. The sunshine all the way from California is here with us. <laughs> Scotty, I love you so much. I love you. I know I'll see you tomorrow night. Yes, I can't wait. Looking yeah. forward to it. Absolutely.